In this video, we're going to take a look at the user interface within Cinema 4D. We're going to start just by labeling the interface and showing the different areas and what commands and tools can be accessed from those locations. On your left and across the top, the first thing you're going to notice are these different icons, these different commands. And those are command groups over here on the upper right. And we also have command palettes that hold different tools and working areas that we can establish just by clicking on those icons. In the main view of the scene you have what's called the viewport and this is going to be the visual representation of your scene and we'll go through that in depth in another video but right now it's just set to what's called a perspective mode and so we have it in a 3D uh, mode. So this is a 3D view that allows me to navigate around within uh, my scene. On the right we have the object manager. This is going to hold every object that is located within our scene. So any object regardless of whether it's made of geometry or whether it's a light or a camera or some kind of background element, all those are going to be housed within the object manager. To the bottom we have the attribute manager. So if I have any object selected, you'll see that in, any information that is available about that object will show up here in the Attribute Manager. To the bottom, we have the Coordinates Manager. And again, this is going to give me the location of my object. And this works in different ways. We can also isolate this to components. So if I want to know the location of a particular point or set of points, that information will be listed here as well. Um, so there's all kinds of information that can be gleaned and also some different things that can be done such as uh, assigning alignment and things like that within the coordinates manager. Uh, so it works both on an object level and a component level as well. On the bottom left we have the material manager and so the material manager will house all the materials for our objects and this is where we'll go to create materials, to edit materials, um, anything that you're going to do with your materials and textures will be accessible from the material manager. Then as I said on the left we have different modes that we can go through. So right now you'll see I've switched to what's called point mode. We can also work in object mode which is the default and object and model modes both deal with the object as a whole. So in this case it's looking at the mesh of the dinosaur here. But I can quickly access components such as edges or polygons by switching to these modes. And now I have more control over especially modeling of these um, shapes once I go into one of these component modes. And we'll certainly be doing that a lot throughout the series. A little bit more about the Attributes Manager. It works not only to tell us information about objects but also about any tool that is active within Cinema 4D. So for example, when I click on the selection tool, you'll notice that the attributes of the selection tool show up here in the Attribute Manager. So anything that has to do with this tool can be accessed here, such as the radius of the selection tool. And right now I'm in what's called Live Selection Mode. So you'll see anywhere that you have a little arrow, that indicates that there are other tools located within that set. So I could easily switch to one of these other selection modes. But just within the live selection tool, you can see I can set my radius. So now I can get finer um, selections here. And I have other options. So for example, right now, it's in a mode called soft selection, which gives me more organic transformations of my components. So in a soft selection uh, work arrangement, you'll see that 
it gives me basically a, a strength uh, fall off for this control. So that way if I were to pull this out, you can see that it's not just moving the singular polygon, but it has a radius of strength that it's pulling upon, and that's going to give me just kind of a more organic transformation. With that set to normal, now I'm just going to work on that polygon itself. So controls like that can be accessed from the Attribute Manager as well as, of course, dealing with the objects. So any information about scale and positioning of objects will show up here in the Attribute Manager. Now, a lot of these areas have multiple tabs that can be accessed, particularly over here, obviously, on the right. So we have the Objects Manager. Below that, we have the Content Browser, which comes with all the preloaded assets that come from Cinema 4D, including textures, uh, full materials, uh, 3D models. All these things can be accessed from the content browser. And if I were to just double click on one of these objects, it would instantly add it to the active scene. Also, you have here the structure manager and this deals with the points of my objects and this is uh, really useful when you're in uh, more of the high level modeling and really needing to get into the uh, information on the components of your objects and you can duplicate points for example uh, and paste them in, move them around and the structure manager helps you to keep track of all those things uh, very very easily At the bottom, where we have the Attributes Manager, we also have the Layers Manager. So this is where, if I had any layers set up, uh, they would be accessible here. And it's very simple to do this. Um, I could start just by creating a new layer from an object selection. I could just create a new layer in general. So for example, if I wanted to split this up into geometry versus uh, scene elements such as my lights and this sky background, I could easily just select all the objects here in the object manager that deal with the mesh. So, for example, here I've got uh, the main body of the uh, T Rex selected. Now, I could uh, select these uh, other objects in multiple ways. One, to get a continuous selection, just like you do in so many other programs, I can just hold the Shift key. And now I can select all those um, objects in between the originally selected object and the last one that I click on. You can also drag marquee selections. Just make sure you start from you know, over in an empty area to select your objects. And then, of course, you can take away or add to individually using the command key on a Mac. On the PC you'll use obviously the control key and you can actually use the control key on the Mac as well. But so I've got this selection. Um, there's multiple ways to create layers and we'll talk about this uh, later on in, a, in a, its own video. But just really quickly I'm going to say new layer from object selection and you'll notice here it shows up and I can say T-Rex mesh and then select the other elements colors fine scene elements and then this guy will be extra. So really quick organization and this is where all those controls will be housed right within the layer manager. Now later on we'll look at using the layer manager as well as some of the other managers here and also get a good look at the viewport 
and how we're able to navigate around within the viewport. The last thing I want to mention here in this video are the menus across the top. So you have your file menu, standard stuff here, save, open. Uh, you'll also see export options, which can be very important, particularly if you're working in an environment where you may need to export your models out. Um, all those options are located within the file menu. Edit, again, a lot of the same uh, simple commands that you're used to. A couple things that are important here, your project settings, which can uh, be set up to determine you know, uh, preset values for frames per second, the uh, length of the project. Uh, all these things can be changed at any time, but oftentimes it might be beneficial to uh, create that from the get-go. Um, and also uh, the color system here. So by default, it's going to enable linear workflow, for example. If you're working on any legacy projects, um, oftentimes you may not want linear workflow enabled or just in your own work areas, depending on if you're working with a client and what they specify, um, color profiles and, and linear workflow can be accessed from this project settings uh, dialog. Also things like the uh, interpolation of your keyframes as you go through, so depending on what kind of animation you're creating, whether you want those to be spline based or perhaps linear. And we'll talk about those in more detail later on as well. But all those are, are accessible right here within the project settings. We also have, within the edit menu, preferences. And so this gets into even more of the inner settings of Cinema 4D. And so you can set up things like team render, um, how much memory you're uh, giving Cinema 4D to work in certain areas, uh, texture sizes for uh, projection man, a lot of these different things that again will uh, may need to be edited based on the exact workflow you're doing for a particular project. And all those are accessible right there from the edit menu. The create menu gives us different options for creating all kinds of assets for our 3D scenes including um, our parametric primitives, our spline based objects, generators, deformers, and then some of our background objects as well and other scenic elements like cameras and lights can all be created from this create menu. The selection set which gives us all our different selection tools which will be very important once we get into uh, modeling and component selection things like that. We have all kinds of different tools and a lot of these deal with uh, things like arrangement, guides, alignment, things of that nature. Then we get into the mesh uh, menu, which deals a lot more with uh, more of our modeling tools. And again, these can be also used for animation as we're staging different uh, geometry to change over time. And so a lot of those things are included here within these menus. And we'll certainly be accessing these as we get into some of our modeling projects. Our uh, snapping menu, the animate menu, and a lot of these things you'll find are accessible from other areas as well. And, and oftentimes these menus are the least uh, convenient way to get to some of these settings. So you're going to see a lot of these are, are actually included here. But there are certain things like add motion clip that are very important and are pretty much only found in the animation and some of these other menus. So it is important to know that they're there. Our simulate menu, which houses things like cloth and hair, as well as particles and, of course, dynamics controls. You'll also see thinking particles is located here. Then we have our render menu, which gives us all the options for um, whether it's rendering within the picture viewer right here inside uh, my viewport or uh, rendering an area within the viewport. All these options are accessible here. And of course, my render settings, uh, which would launch an entire new menu. Then the sculpt menu, which gives us access to all of the sculpting tools within Cinema 4D. And new in R16 is the motion tracker. And the motion tracker gives us the uh, command 
and tool set to uh, be able to project uh, images in and track video footage and we'll certainly be looking at that later on as well. Very important to motion graphics artists and really to modelers as well as the um, MoGraph tool set has really uh, blossomed into allowing not only proced great procedural animation but also some fantastic options for modeling more complex shapes using some of the uh, cloning tools within the MoGraph menu. Then we get into our character sets, so rigging and controls and all those things are enabled here. And we'll be looking at this in the latter chapters of the book. Then uh, plugins, so particular plugins will load right within uh, this plugins menu, depending on how the plugins are written uh, from the third parties, uh, they may be loaded here. They also can be loaded under scripts, so you'll see things like ZBrush, for example is loaded as a script. So depending on how the plugin was generated, it might show up in those plugin uh, plugins menu or it might show up under the scripts menu as well. Then we have our window uh, menu which gives us access to some of the pullouts uh, and different tool sets. So the projection man tool set when we get into that um, actually pulls out all its own commands and uh, the picture viewer, which is where when you do final renders, you'll be rendering out for the most part to the picture viewer and it's accessible at any time, as well as any the managers. You're able to pull out multiple versions of these uh, managers. And again, that can be done right within the interface, but you can also access that here. We also have predefined customizations that are uh, accessible here, so different kinds of layouts, but again, those are mirrored up here uh, in the, in the uh, GUI for us uh, from the get-go. And then lastly, we have our help function. And the help within Cinema 4D is, is really incredible. And the amazing thing is uh, really all you have to do to access help on any particular uh, object or setting within Cinema 4D, anything you can think of, all you have to do is right-click or control-click take that back, control click won't work anymore. Just right click on any object or any setting within the attribute manager and you can use the show help option and it'll actually take you right to the help for that particular uh, setting or parameter. So can't brag enough about how good the help system is within Cinema 4D. As far as I'm concerned it's the best help system within any software that I use. Um, and then lastly, as I said, a lot of times, depending on what kind of uh, project you're doing, you may want to access one of these other layouts. So those are accessible straight from here. So a lot of times, particularly um, the UV edit and paint commands are very helpful uh, just to go ahead and pull out those uh, interface settings and it's going to bring all those tools to the forefront. So you see if I click uh, UV Edit, I'm going to get a totally different um, set of tools and command panels up here to access that are going to give me those tools that I'll need to actually go in and edit the UVs and get them laid out the way I want to. So this is just a brief introduction to the interface within Cinema 4D. And later on, we're going to look at all these settings in detail and put them to good use.